Hello and welcome to part two of the multiple choice pass paper questions for June 2016. I hope that you have been here from start and you're here today. Well, if you're just joining us, then you can check out my other multiple choice um, past paper question videos uh, from 2020 backwards. All right, so let's hit the road. We are starting at question 31 and we're ending at question 60 for the June 2016 paper. All right, here we go. This one says, when five is added to a certain number and the result is multiplied by three, the final answer is 27. Now you can work this question backwards to find out which number was added to five. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and write down in using mathematical symbols what the question is, what the sentence is saying to us. When five is added to a certain number, so we have a certain number plus five. All right, not sure what's happening with the pen. All right, here we go. So the five is added to a certain number, so certain number plus five, and that result is multiplied by three. Final answer is 27. Of course, there are more than one ways that we could uh, solve this equation. But let's just go with expanding the brackets first. We get 3x plus 15 equals 27. Subtracting 15 from both sides, we get 3x equals 12. All right, dividing both sides by 3, x is going to be equal to 4. And you can always check your answer. When 5 is added to a certain number, that's 4, we get 9. That result is multiplied by three, three nines. The final answer is 27. All right, we move to number 31, 32. All right, so it says 3,800 millimeters expressed in meters is, all right, and once you know that um, 1,000 millimeters will give you one meter, then it's easy to just divide 3,800 by 1,000 and you will get 3.8. All right, if you're not sure, one of the problems is that some persons don't remember if they should multiply or divide, etc. If you're not sure, then you just set up your units as I have shown in another video. Ratios can help us. Um, 1,000 millimeters equals one meter. So that's one ratio. And we have 3,800 millimeters equaling to something we don't know, all right? That's what we're asked to find. Then if two ratios are equal, their cross products are also equal. So a thousand times X, that's a thousand X. 3,800 times one, that's 3,800. And clearly we're solving for X. So we need to divide by a thousand and we would have gotten the same answer. All right, number 33, the circle shown above, not drawn to scale, has a center at O. The area for the circle in centimeters squared is, all right, how do we find area? Area for the circle is going to be pi times the radius squared. All right, if we notice pi is still in our answer, so we don't need to represent pi as 3.14, 22 over 7. So we we'll leave pi and uh, what is our radius? We're gonna square that. If our diameter here is six, then our radius is half of that, which is three. Three squared is nine, that's nine times pi. Our answer is B. All right, we move to question 34. It says 10,800 seconds, how do I express that in hours? And if you already know that 3,600 seconds make one hour, then you can easily go ahead and divide 10,800 
by 3,600, all right? And uh, after you would have simplified that because you can't use a calculator, so this is, um, because this is paper one, so you go ahead, divide both by 10, divide by 10 again. Uh, if you know how many times 36 goes into 108, then you just go ahead and do it. If not, take your time and use little numbers to reduce them. But 36 into 108 goes three times. Also, if you did not know 3,600 seconds make an hour, then you go ahead and say, all right, let me turn this. That should be an eight. Let me convert this this number of seconds to um minutes first, which would be dividing by 60. All right, to know how many minutes. And you go ahead and divide here. 6 into 10 goes one time, remainder 4, 6 into 48, 8, 6 into 0, 0. All right, so that would be 180 minutes. And then to know how many hours, you just divide that by 6 again. You'll get 3 hours. All right? Yep. Number 34. Let me see if this thing is working now. Yes, it is. Praise the Lord. All right, number 35. It says the volume of a cube, volume in centimeters cubed, of a cube that has an edge of three centimeters is, and you know that volume, just the formula for volume is just multiplying the length along one edge by itself. Length times length times length right, which is the same as length cubed. So whatever that length is, three centimeters, we're gonna cube it and we should get 27 centimeters cubed. All right, number 36, the figure shows a set of a circle, which means this would be the entire circle, but this is just a piece of it, all right? The length of the minor arc is PQ. The, the minor arc PQ is eight centimeters. And we know the major arc would have been the rest of that circumference. All right. It's eight centimeters. So you put that in on your little diagram. What is the length of the circumference of the circle? All right. So we're looking at the sector itself and we're comparing it with the total circle. All right. So. Let's just do this sector, total circle. We know we can um, compare two things. One, the number of degrees in the circle and also in the sector. And two, length of the arc itself. All right, so here we go. For the sector, the number of degrees is 60. But for the entire circle, the number of degrees is 360 degrees. So again, yeah, use what you know, you're setting up the ratio. All right, the arc, the arc length, all right? So from here to here is eight centimeters. What will it be for the entire circle? And you can go ahead and find your cross products, put them equal to each other because these two ratios are equal. But you can also observe the numbers and say, okay, 60 times what? Gives me 360. That would be times six. And so you do the same for the eight centimeters. Eight times six. And so your answer will be 48 centimeters. You didn't have to multiply. You could ask yourself, what could you? All right, it's fine. Multiplication is best. But you could have said um, 360 divided by whole divided by what number could give you 60? That would be six, just the same. So just to reason it out, number 37, a man started a journey at 9.30 hours and arrived at his destination in the same time zone at 13.30 hours on the same day. All right. Um, that's going to be 9.30 a.m. And then 
30 in 30 hours is going to be 130. I hope you know how to convert using the 24 hour clock. It's going to be 130 p.m. All right. So already you probably start thinking of how long did this journey take and stuff like that. All right. And that might come in handy. So you, you can go and keep it in the back of your brain. All right. That this journey um has taken four hours. You can count it by your finger then. All right. Now it says if his average speed was 30 kilometers per hour. Speed equals 30 kilometers per hour. Then what is the distance in kilometers? And even if you don't necessarily know the formula itself, as it relates to speed, distance, and time, common sense can help you, right? So if his speed is 30 kilometers for every hour that he travels, and he travels for four hours, we don't multiply the four hours by 30 kilometers for each hour. Oops. Okay, what is this now? All right. Per hour. And so, of course, we would have gotten 120 kilometers. All right. So, if you didn't know before today, distance is equal to speed times time. Number 38. Please remember to pause the video at any time to take notes or to do the question before me, etc. The area of a trapezium of the trapezium above is gonna be all right. And remember now, area of a trapezium is gonna be half times the sum of the two parallel sides, which right now are SR and PQ, times the height. All right, so half times the sum of the parallel sides times the height. Um, so that's going to be half times 8 plus 18, both of those in centimeters, times height, which is 5 centimeters. All right, 18 plus 18 is going to be 26 times 5. 2 into 26, 13. 13 times 5, 65. All right, so our area is 65 centimeters cubed, squared. All right, for number 39, it says, the diagram not drawn to scale consists of a triangle resting on a square of side five centimeters. All right, if they didn't tell you it was a square, they would have done this to the sides to indicate that all four sides are equal. All right. Uh, the square has side five centimeters, so automatically you know that the other side is like five centimeters. You don't know what they're going to ask you as yet, so you just go ahead and put in stuff that you know. Um, the height of the triangle is four centimeters. What is the total area of the figure? Very easy. All right. So area of the triangle, whichever one you want to start with. Total area is equal to area of the triangle plus area of the square. All right, area of a triangle half times base times height plus area of a square length times length. Base of the triangle is five centimeters times the height four centimeters. All right, so all of this area of a triangle would have been two into four, two. That gives us five times two, which is 10 centimeters squared. All right. Then we have the area of the square. Five centimeters times five centimeters. 25 centimeters squared. Total, 35 centimeters squared. Number 40. The score which occurs most frequently in a distribution is defined as the mode. Now, when I was in grade five, I just used the fact that they almost rhyme 
most and mode. So you remember that mode means, yeah, the one that occurs the most. All right, 41. The bar chart shows the ages of children who took part in a survey. As we can see, we have number of children here and their age in years. And we've done this question already. How many children took part in the survey? We pay careful attention to the number of children. Three children who are age four plus four more children. And you can see two more plus five children plus one child. All right, and that will give us 15 children. Number 42, we have eight scores, and we are told to find the median of the scores. Median, middle. We are told to find the middle number of the scores. All right, before you can do that, we must put the scores in order. So we have one, then four, then four again. And you can cross them off as you go. Then seven comes next. Then eight, eight, 10, 15. All right, and if we're trying to find out what the middle score is, but we don't have a middle number here because this is an even um, number of numbers, right? We have eight numbers. So we have two middle numbers basically. And you want the average for those two. It's, you can easily kind of see it right now that it's the middle of seven and eight, 7.5. But here's the formula, you add both, you average both numbers. So you add them and you divide the answer by two. 15 divided by 2 is going to be 7.5. All right. In a class of 20 students, 12 are girls. What is the probability that a student chosen at random is a boy? Probability that we get a boy is going to be the number of boys over number of students. All right, because it says a student is chosen at random and it's a boy. There are 12 girls. How many boys are there? Out of 20, that will leave eight boys. All right, divided by number of students. Eight over 20, all right, and we don't have to simplify because eight over 20 is there. All right, number 44, we have a pie chart showing the preference in drinks of a group of students. Each student may select only one drink. If 12 students prefer chocolate, then the total number of students is. Now, even before we know what they're asking, we can sort of start to pick up certain things about the, the pie chart. For example, if this is 120, then the remainder is 60, because this is a straight line, and both of these should combine to make 180. Little things like that. So let your brain start to run. All right. Now it says if 12 students prefer chocolate and C or 60 degrees is going to come in really handy. 12 students prefer chocolate, then the total number of students is, all right, chocolate. We know chocolate in degrees. We know chocolate in terms of number of students. All right, but we're being asked total number of students, which means we need to consider the entire circle. So let me say drinks overall. All right, 60 degrees for chocolate, but the entire circle would take up how many degrees? 360, that's one ratio. And then we have 12 students preferring chocolate. What's the number of students who prefer? Um, what's the total number of students, right? So, as I said, you can use a shortcut if the numbers are easy to work with. 60 times six would give you 360. So you can also multiply 12 times six to give you the value of x, 70. Number 45, if the mean, and we know that that just means general average, of the numbers 2x, 3x, 4x, and 3x is 12. If the average for those four um, numbers is 12, then the sum of the numbers is, so we know the average means, you add up all the numbers. You divide by the amount by the number of numbers, so that's four of them, and you should get the answer twelve. Now it says what is the sum of the numbers, and it's pretty easy. All right, 
So these, this sum should be equal to what? And pretty much, you just want to leave those by themselves. So getting rid of the four, we have times four, times four on the other side, all right? The sum of the numbers is 48. But um, even without them giving you the numbers like 2x3, x4, x3, x, you could simply have said, if I add some numbers, any numbers, um, the average is 12, what is sum of? Sorry, if I add four numbers and the average is 12, then the sum of the numbers would have to be 48 because only 48, you could divide by four and get 12. All right, number 46. Equation of the line which passes through the point zero five and has a gradient of four is, so equation of a line looks like this, y equals n x plus c, equation of a line that's so easy. All right, um, we need to know the gradient and the y-intercept. We are told the gradient is four, and we are told that the point, um, it passes through the point zero five, which means it cuts the y-axis at the number five. And that's what we want right here. So the equation of this line will look like y equals four x plus five. Number 47, this straight line cuts, uh, this straight line AB plus the y-axis at what point? And that's going to be 0, negative 2. I mean, the other answers aren't even close. All right, what's the gradient of AB in the graph above? And yes, if you know two points, you can find the gradient if you know their coordinates. But no need to do that. You can go ahead and simply do your, all right, well, I guess most persons will be familiar with saying rise over run. You just want to know the horizon, the vertical movement, how many units up, that's two units, over the horizontal movement. One, two, three, four units. Two over four, and if we should simplify that, we get a half. That's it. Remember? Gradient is just the um, horizontal movement divided by the vertical movement from one of the points to the other. So even if you did, um, let me use the eraser here a bit. Even if you started from B and you're going to A, the horizontal movement would have been one, two, three, four places to the um to the right, to the left, so that's negative four, and the vertical movement, which should go to the top of our fraction, would be one, two, because you're moving from B to A, so that's two places down, so that's negative two, and you still would have gotten a half. F of X equals this, what would F of negative five be? And where X is, we're gonna put negative five, negative five, I'm squaring it, then I'm subtracting x negative five, minus one. This is 25 minus negative five, same as plus five minus one. It's 30 minus one, 29. Number 50, what is the gradient of the straight line 2y equals negative 3x minus eight? Remember this straight line formula. General equation of a line looks like this, y equals mx plus c, which means if we want to know what the gradient is or what letter, what number is the coefficient of x, I need to get y by itself. It needs to, this is not in the general form right now. So I have the equation. I need to get y by itself, which means I'm going to divide by 2. But anything I do to one side of the equation, I have to do it to the other, which means I have to do to every term on the other side. All right, so y is now equal to negative 3x over 2 minus 4. And the gradient is going to be right here. Number 51, the range of um, this relation we have here, all right? We have the domain, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. 
and we are supposed to find the range for that. All right. Um, so of course, it means that we need to know the matching y value for each of these x values. So x to the fifth is the general formula we're using. All right, so negative two raised to the fifth power is how much? Negative one raised to the fifth power is how much? And this is what you're asking yourself for each of the values so that you can get the range. Negative two to the fifth power. I hope you're practicing your indices. All right. So this is going to be negative 32, negative one, zero, one, 32. All right. Number 52, what transformation maps this to this? All right. Is it an enlargement? Nope. Didn't get bigger or smaller. Is it a rotation? No, it did not change orient. Well, it did, but in a certain way. All right. Um, but not a rotation. All right, definitely. Is it a translation? No, not a slide or a glide. Is it a reflection? Yes, you can clearly see that the mirror line would be just about here and the matching points on the other side of the mirror line. All right, number 53, the image of a point P and it has coordinates one, two under translation is P prime, negative five, negative four. What is the translation vector? So the coordinates for P, well, representing it in vector form, one, two, plus a certain translation vector, let's call it x, y, since we don't know the x and y coordinate, should give you P prime, which is negative five, negative four. Good? Since we want x, y, we can subtract this vector, this from both sides. All right, I don't have the space. I'm just going to rewrite down here. X, Y is now going to be equal to negative 5, negative 4, minus 1, 2. All right, so if you didn't know the formula for finding a translation vector, you now know that the translation vector is going to be P prime of the image subtract what the object coordinates are. All right, so yeah, negative five minus one, that's negative six. Negative four minus two, that's negative six. Number 54 in the diagram, we have two parallel lines, A, B, and C, D. Which of the following describes the relation between X and Y? We've done 54. And as you can see, we have our tenant angles here, which means they are equal. All right, number 55. The triangle, not drawn to scale. AB is 17 centimeters, AC, 15 centimeters, BC is X. The angle BCA is 90 degrees. What is the value of X? Um, this is a relationship between three sides of a right angle triangle. So we know we should use the Pythagoras theorem, which tells us that the length of the hypotenuse squared the hypotenuse you can clearly see is AB is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. All right, so this is 17 centimeters squared equals 15 centimeters squared. Plus BC, we don't know, that's X. All right, so yeah, this is going to be 289. I hope you know your square timetable. Otherwise, you'd have to multiply these by hand. 15, squaring 15, we get 225 centimeters squared plus x. We want x by itself, so we subtract 
225 from both sides. All right, now we have x. Sorry, this was x squared, bc squared. So now we have x squared is equal to, sorry, 289 minus 225, that's going to be 64 to the squared. Therefore, x is equal to, we want to, we have to square root both sides in order to get that final answer for x, and that is going to be 8 centimeters. And no, we will not write plus or minus 8 because we're dealing with length and we know it can only be positive. All right. Number 56 in the diagram. AB is parallel to EC, and we can see the indication here. The measure of angle BDE, and you follow with your pens, B, D, E. The measure of that angle, what is it going to be? And as you can see here, all right, these are four interior angles. And those are going to be supplementary, right? Because they add up to 180 degrees. So if this angle here is 40, then this angle here is 40 being subtracted from 180, which leaves us with 140. Now, if you didn't know what type of angles they were, and but you are a boss at identifying alternate angles, then you know that right here would also be 40. And then you now know that angles that are straight on a straight line at this point here would add up to 180 and you would still get your 140. All right, we have a right angle triangle. We need to know which of the trigonometric ratios is equal to four over eight. All right, let's test sine x. Sine x, x is here, opposite over hypotenuse, opposite four. Hypotenuse, eight. And we have our answer then. All right. None of the other ratios would have been the correct thing. So if you were to do sine x, the answer would be four over eight. Number 58, an isosceles triangle. So you automatically start thinking of the fact that since these two sides are equal, then these two angles are also equal. It says, what is the value of x? We know the three angles in the triangle must add up to 180. These two angles add up to 60. And so we just need to subtract Oops. to find the value of x. x is 180 degrees minus 60 degrees, that would be 120 degrees. All right, this one says, and we've done this before, we have triangle ABC, we have a center of enlargement O. All right, after that transformation, the enlargement, we have triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. What is the scale factor of enlargement? All right, and we've looked at two ways. Um, we can look at the length of corresponding sides. So for example, AC and we have A prime, C prime. So you just pick up here, all right? The length of AC is two units, as you can see here, one, two. A prime, C prime is four units. By what number did you multiply two to enlarge it to four? It has to be multiplied by two. That's a factor, of, that's a scale factor of enlargement. Um, you could have picked any pair of sides, B, C, um, compare it with um, B prime, C prime, and so on. Uh, yep. Yeah. And of course, if you're doing a paper two question, you're asked to find scale factor of enlargement. All you need to do is find a part of the image, match it, divide it by, the length of the matching part of the object, the original, all right? So in this case, you could have done 
A prime C prime divided by AC. That would have been four over two, which would give you your answer of two, all right? So that's how you'd show your workings. But if you did this, that's okay. All right, number 60. We have the diagram showing an angle of depression from Z to a point X, all right, being 30 degrees. X is 10 meters away from Y, and we want the height of YZ, all right? Um, we know again by alternate angles that this angle here at X would be 30 degrees, all right? And if we are finding the height here, it means the opposite angle is included. All right. So we have we have the adjacent angle, the adjacent side, sorry. And we have the we need to find the opposite side. So that's gonna be tan the tan ratio. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So tan 30 degrees is equal to yz over the adjacent side 10 meters. We need yz, so multiply both sides by 10. And there you have it, yz equals 10 times 30. And that is our final question. So I will see you in the next video.